In the previous video, we left off as Agent Hoskins managed to escape the overwhelming hostile mob attacking Acera Hospital, but not without being heavily injured and losing her partner, Anderson. On the other side of the conflict zone, Xanders and his unit of LMB have been doing their best to carry out their mission of securing and physically downloading the server assets from the District Union Bank Headquarters. While being held back by a few altercations, it was an unlikely group that came to their aid so that they were able to carry out their mission. Melanie Hoskins awakens two days later, her body and mind needing this time to heal and recover. Agent Jason Shu is there when she wakes up, and informs her that he's just received a report that a nearby medical clinic in the Dark Zone is under attack. Hoskins is still visibly struggling with the recollections of Anderson, and how the events went down. She wonders to herself how she would have reacted in the same situation if it had been her husband and little boy. While on their way to the Dark Zone, Shu explains to her that Anderson's death was the result of him allowing his personal problems to overwhelm his own judgement, which resulted in him acting impulsively and ultimately losing sight of the overall mission. And in order for the Division agents to be successful in their mission, they need to remain calm, focused, and not let their emotions get the better of them. After all, this is what they've been trained for. Eventually they identify the clinic coming up ahead of them, and note it's on fire. It appears that the cleaners are potentially nearby. Approaching the building, they observe the silhouette of a person on the second floor, when suddenly, said person opens fire upon them, and the agents have to quickly take cover. Keeping themselves close to the walls of the surrounding building, they advance carefully towards the clinic. Once inside, they make their way towards the stairs. However, the cleaners are waiting for them, and a remote firebomb has exploded, narrowly missing the agents. They return fire, but the cleaners manage to escape up the stairs and onto the second level. Reluctant to encounter more of the cleaners' traps, the agents look for another way to access the second floor and discover the fire escape. Shu utilizes a new upgrade to his gear, a device which emits pulse waves that acts as a recon device which can spot enemies and other people from a distance. It detects two cleaners at the top of the stairs and another across the hall. It shows them that on the other side of the building are six people locked in a room. They immediately phone in the hostage situation, requesting backup. Given the situation is dire, as the building is coming down around them, they don't have time to wait for a response. Hastily, they make their way towards the locked room. Unable to move quietly anymore as time is running out, the cleaners detect them and immediately start advancing. The agents manage to locate the room, and Chu instructs the medical staff inside the room to quickly back away from the door. He then proceeds to shoot out the locks. Unfortunately, the cleaners have now caught up with them, and promptly open fire upon the agents. They have no choice but to take cover, and are now pinned in the same room alongside the hostages. With the fires continuing to rapidly spread, the whole building is nearly completely engulfed in flames. They need to make a decision, and fast. Employing two flashbangs and a smokescreen, Hoskins provides a distraction, while Shu quickly makes his way out of the room with the medical staff, and back down the fire escape. With the building coming down around them, their vision is blocked, and under heavy fire by Hoskins, the cleaners decide to withdraw. As they begin to depart, Hoskins hears one of them call out to another, Johanna. She can hardly believe her ears. Her sister? Surely not. What would she be doing here? Why would she be doing this? And how could her sister be one of the people hurting all of these innocent individuals? Going against Shu's orders, Hoskins immediately pursues after the cleaners. The cleaners are aware they're being followed by the division agent, but they're going into the sewers. The underground is a maze, and if you don't know where you're going, you'll quickly find yourself lost. Yet Hoskins is undeterred and keeps going. Eventually Johanna stops, sick of being followed and unwilling to risk them finding out where they stay, at once opens fire on the agent as soon as she comes within sight. It is here that the two sisters both come to the realization that they are fighting on different sides of the conflict. Johanna claims that what she is fulfilling is a function that no one else has the guts to execute. That there is no way to get rid of the virus, except through the actions of what the cleaners are prepared to do. What the government is attempting is only making the situation worse, especially now that they have abandoned and fled the quarantine zone. Hoskins tries to plead with her sister, begging her to understand that what she is doing is wrong. 
but Johanna turns her back and leaves. Hoskins continues to chase the fleeing figures, but eventually loses them in the tunnels. Shu again tries to make contact and calls through, asking for her status. Reluctantly, she makes her way back the way she came, and up to the surface. Emerging from the darkness, Shu helps her out of the manhole. Other agents have since arrived, and one of them, named Amzel, Hoskins recognises as the training instructor she met all those months ago. Amzel explains that things have gotten bad out there. A lot of agents are missing. The division need all the help they can get. She then leaves with the medical staff, while Hoskins catches her breath and catches up with Shu. Shu is furious. He demands that Hoskins explain why she pursued the cleaners. They already had the hostages, and it was an extremely risky move to follow them down into the sewers. She confesses to him that one of those cleaners was her sister, and that her sister was the one responsible for Anderson's death. Taking a moment to process what she's just said, he then admits that he knows of her sister. Originally, the agency had approached Johanna, before they had even met and taken an interest in Hoskins. And while Johanna had all of the qualities and attributes they look for, a soldier, quick-witted, experienced, adaptable, she had failed the early pre-testing process. They identified her as being highly misguided and overly impressionable, which, given her current situation, only proved to be true. Disheartened by everything that had occurred during the operation, and particularly in what she'd discovered, Hoskins suggests that they should visit her sister's apartment. Not that she thinks she'll be there anymore, especially now that she knows the agents may be looking for her, but perhaps they may be able to find something that could point them towards the cleaners and where they're operating. They agree to check it out in the morning and head back to base to get some rest. The Dark Zone is growing more dangerous by the day, and nine days in, Xanders and his LMB are starting to show signs of fatigue, and it's only time before they lose their position. The server backup is only at 68%, and due to hardware complications, it could be another five days from completion. They're losing men, and the representative from the bank is only making things worse by questioning every call and barking out commands. Sanders gets in contact with Bliss and explains the situation. They're cut off from the rest of the LMB, and unfortunately, there is no hope of reinforcements anytime soon. After his conversation with Bliss, and then witnessing even more of his men getting injured due to the growing hostile presence outside, he has finally had enough. He refuses to stand by any longer, while the majority of his men continue to get slaughtered defending an empty building. He has already lost three soldiers, and several more have been injured. Whatever this contract is worth, the safety of his men is more important. Bliss has given him the okay to pull his men out and regroup with the other LMB units close by. He orders his men to start preparing to move out. The bank rep is losing his mind. He's screaming at Xanders about the importance of the data that is being stored here, that the economic stability of the country depends on it, and that Xander's men aren't as important as the mission before them. As if this wasn't enough, the rep then picks up a gun and points it at the LMB, commanding that they immediately put their things down. Unalarmed, but internally seething, Xanders turns his own gun upon the rep, and guns him down where he stands. Surrounded by hostiles and unable to call in support, Xanders turns to the only person he believes can help him and his men escape, Johanna Fisher. And yet again, by using her knowledge of the area, Fisher is able to guide the unit through the sewers to a nearby group of LMB, who have managed to secure a good defensive position. Meanwhile, agents Hoskins and Shu find themselves in Johanna's apartment. The building is empty, and it's obvious that no one has been here for a long time. They begin to poke around for any clues they are able to find to help identify where she could have gone. Fortunately for them, there happens to be enough data for Isaac to create an echo, which provides intel on her possible whereabouts, or at least where her crew were last hanging out. Perhaps they could find more clues there. They started heading towards a building next to Little John's Pizza, and when close enough, they scan the area. Isaac establishes that there are three people inside. They seem to be preparing firebombs. The agents quickly make their way to the outside of the building, and prepare to engage. Johanna isn't there, but this is a huge stockpile of firebombs, and it's vital that they don't let them get onto the streets. Hoskin lobs in a flashbang. Disorientated, the cleaners barely have time to react. Two of them are gunned down, 
but before the third individual is able to be taken out too, she quickly arms one of the bombs. Reacting immediately to the threat, Shu throws the newly armed device through the window before it has a chance to detonate. In the room, Isaac constructs another echo that gives the location of where all these bombs and detonators are being made. The cleaners call it the shop, and it's located East 20th and 3rd Street. However, while all of this is going on, Johanna and her crew are in the process of returning to the apartment. As they come up through the sewer manhole, she instantly notices the fire on the street, and then, looking up at the apartment, she observes the orange glow of the echo. It seems that the division has found them, and if they were able to locate the apartment, it wouldn't be long before they found the shop. Johanna's crew suggests contacting Pharaoh, and to bring in the cavalry and relocate everything on site. Knowing full well that her sister is behind this, Johanna answers, No. Let them come. <laughs>